I feel like it's been forever since I've talked to you guys, but we're here talking about the same thing. Blue Jays lose 4 nothing to the New York Yankees and open up the informal second half of the season with a dud. Aaron Sanchez was on the mound for the Blue Jays, and through the first four innings, he was awesome. And that's what I've learned with Aaron Sanchez, at least over the last little while, is that he has one or maybe two bad innings, which come back to haunt him. And you look at today's ball game; he was spectacular through four. He was fine in the strike zone. He was working pitches. He was looking great. He had one walk. I think it was through the first four innings. If I'm not mistaken, that's what the way it was for Aaron Sanchez. But then problem struck in the fifth, where Brett Gardner gets a leadoff triple, and it all caves in after that. DJ LeMay, who gets an RBI ground out, but hey, it's only one run. There's still an out and nobody on. The problem for Aaron Sanchez is getting behind in counts. Bottom line, not throwing strikes. And you go to that fifth inning, and Aaron Judge, what did he face to get that single to center field? A 2-0 pitch. How did Aaron Hicks double to right field? A 3-0 pitch. When you're behind in the count, you always you, you if you guys ever play baseball and you say, well, he's in a hitter's count. Anything, 1-0, 2-0, 3-0, it's all a hitter's counts. And Aaron Sanchez, working from behind, is trying to face some really good hitters from behind. And he just can't do that. And he just caves in. Then he hits Gary Sanchez. And then he throws a meatball to Edwin, who crushes it to left center field and it hits the wall. Bases loaded. They all come around to score. It's a, ba- a bases clearing double for Edwin. And it's a 4-0 ball game. It all implodes on Aaron Sanchez because he loses his command and he gets behind and counts. It's not all about walks. But it's about just not throwing consistent strikes, or even quality strikes for that matter. He just hasn't been very good. Now begs the question. I mean, every time Aaron Sanchez goes out there and he does not throw a good start, you run into that question of, well, do you throw him in the bullpen? Because you look at today, he had four great innings. And then a fifth one was awful. So, I don't know what Charlie's going to end up doing with Aaron Sanchez. We all know that that um, Ryan Brucky's on the way. We knew he just pitched uh, yesterday in Buffalo, so he's really, really close to returning to the big leagues. Uh, we know Sean Reed Foley's a guy that could probably could slide into that mix. Thomas Pannone, if needed, could probably slide in there. Actually, Edwin Jackson pitched there after uh, Ryan Brucky yesterday. Just a little heads up there. So... You're looking at this whole rotation for the Jays, and it's look, it's a it's a it's a whole kerfuffle. We don't know what the heck's going on with it. We know Trent Thornton's there, you know um, Marcus Stroman is there. That's great. You know, it's great to see those guys in there. The problem is, you just can't run these guys out every single day. Look at, I mean, guy, guy like Clayton Richard. He has a six point two three earned run average. He's got a one and five record. Do you trust him out there? No. Marcus Stroman, one of the only guys I trust out there for the Blue Jays. He's got a 3.18 ERA. And uh, Trent Thornton, he's been, you know, for a young guy who just got thrown into the fire for this team, he's looked pretty damn good. He's 3-6 and six with a 4.85 earn run average. But then he run into a bullpen day. And then you've got, like, Aaron Sanchez going out there. Since the beginning of May, he's 0-12 with an over-8 ERA. That is awful. I mean, something's got to be done with this guy. And I don't just mean being traded because you, what are you going to get? you got to try and build this guy's value somehow. And in my eyes, that's putting him in the bullpen. Do I trust Joe Biagini in the eighth? Not really. I mean, would I trust Aaron Sanchez? It's worth a shot because, man, both guys are struggling. So for the Blue Jays, yeah, you had a dud today. You lost 4 nothing. The offense wasn't there. You had no runs on five hits. Domingo Herman was fantastic for the New York Yankees today. Offensively, Sogard went 2 for 4. Freddie Galvis went 1 for 4. Biggio went 1 for 4. Vladdy went 1 for 4 after the crazy home run derby performance that he had uh, there in Cleveland. 
And Danny Jansen continues to swing the bat pretty well. He was one for three in the game, raising his batting average to 213 from 211 at the start of the game. So Danny Jansen's continuously, you know, showing that pro the progress. Uh, you know, Kevin Bijo and Vladimir Guerrero Jr. both getting hits in the ball game. Lourdes Gurriel Jr. was 0 for 4, and he's been struggling a little bit as of late. Again, still an amazing hitter. We know he's going to get hot once again, but. You look at this team and there's a lot of holes. You know, we talked about Aaron Sanchez. Gavilio had a great game today. Uh, he went two innings, gave up a couple hits, nothing else though. No runs, no walks, a couple strikeouts. Justin Schaefer was out there. A guy who's been amazing down there in Buffalo. Uh, it's good to, see, good to see him get a chance there today. But again, I think once a guy like Ryan Brucky comes back, you're going to see a guy like Justin Schaefer get sent down. Uh, but he went an inning, gave up a hit, didn't rock a batter, didn't give up a run, struck out a guy, good job there. Yeah, I mean, in a very small sample size, of course, only 10 and a third innings. But ERA of 2.61 for Justin Schaefer, so it's good to see there for him. I think he's only, what, 26 years old, too? Uh, yeah, 26-year-old reliever. I mean, you can't go wrong with something like that. But... For this Jays team, you've got to realize that July 31st is right around the corner. And for anybody who's not a hardcore baseball fan, first off, I don't know why you're watching a Blue Jays game then at that point. But So I'm assuming most of you guys are. And you know what July 31st is. It's the, it's the trade deadline. There's no, no, there's no August 31st deadline anymore. It's one trade deadline. And ideally, it's the way it should be in my eyes. But... That's the trade deadline, guys. And, and look, today is what? July, July 12th. We're half a month away from the trade deadline. The Jays have some veteran guys that teams want. A guy like Ken Giles, as much as I would love to keep him around. Teams are going to want him. A guy like Marcus Stroman. We've heard the name around a lot in trade talks. What's going to happen there? I don't know. What's going to happen with a guy like Justin Smoke? A guy like Eric Sogard, Freddie Galvis, Daniel Hudson out of the bullpen. If you can get anything for any of your starters you got, a guy like Clayton Richard, which you probably won't get anything for, and I don't think they'll end up moving him because you need an arm at some point. But this team is going to get younger. And I know we talk about the, the youth movement for this team, and guys like Lourdes Gurriel Jr. is one of the vets at 25 years old, and Biggio's 24, and Vladdy's 20, and, and Danny Jansen's 23, and you're going to have Brian Baraki, who's 24, Sean Reed Foley's 22. You're going to see all these great, and Bo Bichette's 21 and going to be up here soon. You're going to see more of it. TJ Zook is probably going to be up here fairly soon. Julian Merriweather, even though he's still taking his time coming up here uh, to the big leagues after the Tommy John surgery, he's going to be up here at some point. He's only 27 years old. This team is going to get younger, everybody. I mean, look, it might get rough, but to be able to see these names, to see these marquee names, a guy like Julian Merriweather, who we're all hoping and praying is good because you got him for Donaldson, a one-for-one. One. Is TJ Zook, a former first-round pick, going to turn out to be something? We don't know. Is Ryan Barucki going to have a pretty good season like he did last year? Is he going to end the year right? I don't know. We're going to have to wait and see. Is Stroman going to get moved? Is he going to get signed? Is he going to have a good year? I don't know. There's, is Bo Bichette going to live to the hype? Is Vladdy going to finally catch fire and hit 280 the rest of the way, 290, whatever? Is Guriel going to get, look, all these question marks for these young players, it's going to be a, it's going to be a trek. It's not going to be easy for us to watch. There's going to be days like this where you get six hits, no runs, and you get shut out. It, it's just going to happen at times. But there's going to be other games where you see this, your team absolutely crush, and you see all your young guys do well, and you're like, man, this is the future. That's just what th th this process is. Does the process suck rear end? Oh, yeah. Do we enjoy it? No. But in the end, everybody, it's all going to be worth it, and we all know that. Speaking of the future, speaking of the minor leagues, um, I'm not going to go down to AAA, Buffalo. Uh, they had a double header today. I already looked at the stats, and, and Bo didn't get a hit in either game. Uh, TJ Zook started the game in, in game one. I think he went five and two thirds and gave up three runs. It's so not a great outing for him, but again, it's only, what, third third outing there at AAA this year and like fifth all season. So, again, giving him some time to kind of get back into the swing of things there for him. Uh, but we're, we're going to go down to the AA New Hampshire Fisher Cats, and um, they, they won 4-2 today. My boy! Yenzi Diaz on the mound for the New Hampshire Fisher Cats. It was awesome there again today. Five innings, six hits, two runs, walk two, and strike out two. ERA of 3.59 for Yenzi Diaz. Again, the 21-year-old, 22-year-old kid? Uh, 96. So he's 
Uh, hold on. Yep, 96. He's, he's, he's a November birthday. He's a 22-year-old pitcher doing great things there at AA New Hampshire. Great stuff for Yenzi Diaz. Having a great start there. Uh, oh, with the bats, um, Kevin Smith had a good ball game. He, again, one of the Jays' top 10 prospects, but has really struggled at AA New Hampshire this year. Uh, but he had a good ball game there today. Went 2-4, for four, scored a couple runs, had three RBIs. But he's only hitting 186, so really struggling down there. Chad Spanberger went one for four with a run scored. Uh, Riley Adams went one for four with an RBI and a run scored. Warmoth went 0 for three with a with a, with a walk and a strikeout. He's only hitting 228. Um, but again, it's all about growth for these guys. You know, Logan Warmoth's never been up to Double A, and we, you always hear from Triple A to the big leagues is the biggest gap. But from High A Dunedin, in our case, to Double A New Hampshire is the next biggest jump. So for a guy like Logan Warmoth, who hadn't played a lot last year, who struggled when he did play, to see him go up to the in Dunedin this year and play really well and tear it up, yeah, you don't expect him to go up there to double-A and, and rip it apart. Now, if he does the rest of the way and has a great end of the season, fantastic. But him only hitting two twenty eight, that's okay. I'm all right with that. All right, uh, Dunedin, I think they had a rough game today and there really wasn't anything po- – actually, no, I think they got postponed, actually. Uh, yeah, they got postponed until tomorrow – we're going to go into the Lansing Lugnuts and my boy, the guy that is, has, has skyrocketed through the Jays organization over the last year, Gabriel Moreno, the catcher slash DH, uh, had a great ball game for the Lansing Lugnuts today. Are they, are they still playing? They're up 6-1 to one right now. I think it is. Uh, they are up 6-1 to one right now. And Gabriel, so Griffin Conine's 0 for 4 with 3 Ks. Still hitting 314 on the season, but again, struggling over the last little bit for Griffin Conine. But what a game it was, though, for Gabriel Moreno. He's now two for four with two two RBIs and a run scored. He's hitting 310. Remember, Moreno, he's 19. And ripping apart, um, ripping apart A. Lansing. Who else was doing that? Jordan Groshans. What was Groshans? A first round pick. Moreno's turning some heads right now down in the Jays minor leagues. Now, will he be able to continue that? Will he end the year with. The New Hampshire Fisher, or sorry, New Hampshire, Lansing Lugnuts, or will he get the call once the roster was expanded for the Blue Jays? They got a call up, and it kind of like is a domino effect the rest of the way. Will he end up getting a call there to uh, Dunedin to end the year? I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure. But for what we're seeing right now from Gabriel Moreno, because he's only 19, it is fantastic stuff. Hagen Danner, the catcher, struggling this year. He was two for three with a couple of RBIs in the ball game today. Uh, great job there. Quickly down to the Blue Field Blue Jays before we wrap this baby up here. Uh, Miguel Geraldo, one of the young players in the minor leagues, way down there in Bluefield. Uh, he was 2-for-4 with an RBI and a run score today. He's in 309 down there. And Leonardo Jimenez went 0-for-4 in the ballgame, so he's been he was struggling there in this one. But he's still hitting 296 on the season. Remember, these guys are 18 and 17 years old, so still very, very raw for the Toronto Blue Jays organization. But again, two good-looking young players. They're going to take their time coming up here, but... It's great to have depth in the organization, and that's what you're seeing from the Blue Jays. And if I'm not mistaken, if you guys can let me know, I haven't, I, I haven't checked in a couple days here. Has Alec Manoa, uh, Desan Brown, or Kendall Williams pitched or hit? I guess in Desan Brown case, have they played at all in the minor leagues? I've been trying to keep an eye on the Gulf Coast League, and I haven't really seen anything. I follow Alec, Alec Manoa and and Kendall Williams on Instagram and everything, but I haven't seen them play a game or anything. So I don't know what the whole spiel is on that. If you guys can let me know in the comments below, that'd be fantastic. All right. Game two of the three-game set against the New York Yankees uh, goes tomorrow afternoon. It's a 105 first pitch there at Yankee Stadium. Clayton Richard on the mound for the for the Blue Jays and Jay Happ on the mound for the New York Yankees. And, um, guys, look, Jay Happ has not been having a good season. He's 7-4. Uh, four, and four. Yeah, it's a great record, but your team is unreal. Uh, with a 5.02 earner on average, we all know that's not Jay Happ. We've seen Jay Happ over the last three years, the two years, and then I guess the half of the season last year. He was awesome. He's a dynamite player, great arm. He's struggling right now, and I, look, I don't know what it's what it's what, what the reasoning is. I don't, I don't watch Yankee games on a consistent basis, but that's a pitching pitching matchup there tomorrow afternoon at 105 at Yankee Stadium. All right, so you know what, guys? That is going to do it for this one. You guys enjoy this video because I, I might be a little bit rusty. If you guys want to let me know that I'm a little bit rusty, you guys go right ahead in the comments below because, hey, I've had almost a week off. I never have this. It is weird. It was really weird coming home and, oh, there's no ball game on tonight. Okay, is Mitch Martin going to sign me? Maybe let me do something. Nope, nothing. So I was just sitting around doing nothing. It was crazy. But uh, back in action there for us as well. It's good to, good, to, good to be back at it. 
Um, hit that like button if you guys enjoyed this one. Hit the subscribe button if you guys have not already. Comment down below your thoughts on the game, guys, the video, uh, the minor leaguers we talked about, the big league club, Aaron Sanchez's future, some of the veterans' futures uh, for the Toronto Blue Jays. I want to hear your guys' thoughts uh, about a lot of these guys. I want to hear. I really want to get your guys' opinions on on everything towards this team surrounding them uh, heading into the trade deadline. About half a month from now, it's just over a half a month from now. It's crazy how it's picking up real quick, but there's things are going to start happening. I don't know what. But we're gonna have to wait and see how it plays out, guys. All right. Excuse me. So, um, guys, follow up Mo Buckets on Twitter, Blue Jays Wave. On Instagram, excuse me, I'm trying to hold in the bird. I'm trying to hold it and be, per, be a little professional about it. All right, so check out my main memo buckets on Twitter, guys. Blue Jays Wave on Instagram. Um, amazing guy. He posts awesome content. When there's a Jays highlight, he posts it. But it ain't like today where you lose 4 nothing. He ain't posting squat other than the post-game numbers and everything because there wasn't a highlight. All right, so, guys, check them out once again, Blue Jays Wave on Instagram. Twitter is down below, guys. Follow up, send me a DM, do all that great stuff, and I'll talk to you guys, Jays Edition, there tomorrow, tomorrow or later afternoon, I guess you want to call it, 3 or 4 o'clock, whenever the heck the game finishes. It's a 105 first pitch at Yankee Stadium. Clayton Richard, Jay Happ is a starting pitching matchup there tomorrow at Yankee Stadium. Thank you guys so much for listening and watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Talk to you guys then.